Encore, coming to you from my dressing room at City Center, where we're doing Irma La Douce for Encores. I hope to see you there before this Sunday. I, I grew up in North Jersey, uh, right across the George Washington Bridge. And uh, a friend of mine told me that there was a musical being done at a little community theater called the Bergen County Players. And they were doing a musical about killing people and putting them in meat pies and people eat them. And my 14-year-old brain thought that was just the coolest thing I'd ever heard. So I went and saw their production of Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. And at 14, 15 years old, uh, that show has a surprise ending. And when I saw the surprise ending, I thought, tomorrow there's going to be a hundred people here again who don't know that's coming. I have to be there when they find out. Yes, yes, uh, her name is Maggie Lakis and she's in doing uh, Avenue Q in her old stages right now. I would absolutely say to go, to go to college. I think it's different for performing arts though. I would say don't go to a school that you think will give you a fancy piece of paper because the fancy piece of paper doesn't matter in the audition room, go to the program that you actually think is going to make you a better performer, um, because that's what's ultimately going to matter at the end of the day. There are so many pros. I mean, A, you're playing make-believe for a living. Uh, there are a lot of folks who will come in and like, I'm so tired today, and I want to like loan them the box set of Dirty Jobs and say, like, we're actually just playing we're pretending that things are happening to us, and they're not. Uh, it's not that uh, crazy. But um, uh, the cons, uh, you miss a lot of things. Shows are important. So there are cousins' graduations and weddings and birthdays that you end up not being able to go to. I would say that that's the biggest con. Um, but everything else is a big old pro. I think a specific physicality for any specific character comes inside out for me. I don't, I don't tend to work sort of like, I think you should have a limp for noise. Um, uh, I, I definitely start with the text and then you go inside out. And uh, for Chaplin, for example, um, was endless sort of research and discovery as to not just that he, you know, pops his shoulder as he walks away. Uh, because it's cute and funny, why did he do it in those movies? Why would his shoulder pop? Oh, it's because he's let down by a woman or an opportunity, and as he's turning away, he's shaking it off. Oh, that's why he's doing it. And you start to establish a physical vocabulary that you try to get fluent in uh, for each character. Uh, and this one, Irma LaDuce, is fun because I get to play Monsieur Oska, who has a very crazy physicality, but Nestor is not a master of disguise, so it's not the most convincing old man you've ever seen. Yeah, double duty, meaning that I was uh, in rehearsal for one show uh, while I was performing the previous show at night. It's crazy. Doing double duty is crazy. Um, particularly vocally, if they're both musicals and you spend all day singing and learning new music that's not quite in your voice yet, and then you've got to go sing a big show at night. Um, it can be terrifying. Um, so the, the most you can do is get sleep and rest and uh, eat right, and which I, I'm saying, telling you to eat right right now with my Dean and Duolico Brownie over here. So you're going to do what you're going to do. I, I was lucky enough to do Amadeus, uh, to play Mozart in Amadeus. That's not a musical, but it is definitely a musical role. Um, but I'd love another stab at that, at, at Mozart in Amadeus. Well, my favorite thing about Chaplin was the people. Um, we keep in touch all the time. I, I, am, I am madly in love with that group of people. And, uh, and we really do keep in touch a lot. We, uh, 13 of us, uh, closing night in my dressing room, got little Chaplin tattoos. Uh, yeah, some uh, woman named Friday Jones came into the dressing room and did them in the dressing room right after the last show. It was awesome. Um, so my favorite thing was the people, but I would say that my favorite moment uh, was when Chaplin's family came to see the show. Uh, it was on a Friday night, and on Sunday, I got an email forwarded to me from the composer of Chaplin, Chris Curtis, and he said, hey, I think you'd want to see this, and it was an email from the family to him, saying, hey, that clip that they project of Chaplin walking off into the sunset at the end, what movie was that from? We've tried to find it all weekend, and it was me. We filmed it on a field in La Jolla, and I got it at 3 o'clock in the morning and cried like an idiot. That was my favorite moment, for sure. 
I think it was getting getting the little tramp stuff right. I, I knew that I had a lot of freedom when I played him as like a guy, but when the hat and the mustache and the cane go on, you know that people know that. They, they come to the show with that expectation. If they bought a ticket to Chaplin, that's what they're coming to see, so you have to get that right. And the, the sort of endless discovery of that was difficult. And then there was a bunch of stunts. I had to roller skate blindfolded and walk a tightrope and all this craziness, but out of all of them, by far the hardest thing was learning how to play the violin. Uh, it was, it still is crazy. People say, you learned how to play a violin for Chaplin? No, I learned how to play a song on the violin. Uh, the violin is, I play a lot of instruments and that is by far the most difficult. Oh, Zach Unger. Zach Unger can play Younger Me anytime he wants. Like in life, he could just follow me around and say things I say, because I think he's the cutest kid in the world. Um, he's also a phenomenal actor. Like not in the like, wow, for a kid he's a cute actor, he's a great actor. Oh, I'd never say never, I'd love to. Sure, who's doing it? <laughs>